Hi Gophers, my name is Alex Pluto and welcome to my package main channel. API clients or SDKs are very helpful when you're shipping your REST APIs to the public. And Go makes it very easy for you as developer as well as for your users, thanks to its idiomatic design and type structure. But what defines a good API client? In this video, we are going to talk about some best practices of writing a good API client in Go. We'll be using faces.io APIs as an example in this video. Before we begin to write any code, we should study API documentation to understand the main aspects of it. What is the base URL of the API and can it change later? Does it support versioning? What are the error codes and error responses? What's the uh, general response format? As well, how clients should authenticate? So let's go to the documentation of faces.io API and answer these questions. Um, so the base URL would be this one, api.faces.io. Um, in terms of authentication, we should send API key using the header, authorization header. Also in the endpoint format, I can see that it supports versioning. So in this case, it's version one, but it may change later. So our API client should be flexible enough to, to change version in future. Let's see what are the errors here. Um, so here would be our, the error response format. So includes code and message. There are some error codes possible. Understanding of all of these will help you to put the right structure from the beginning. Now let's start writing our API client. So let's start with the basics. Let's create a repository. Let's initialize Go modules there and create some basic structure. So Go mod init would initialize our go.mod file with our package name and possible dependencies later. Let's start with the client struct, which will hold user-specific information such as API key, base URL, HTTP client. So we will put it into the main file, faces go. Our package would be faces and so our client structure should be flexible enough so users can change base URL, HTTP client in future but also we shouldn't export all fields because something may be just internal to the API client. So for now, I'll just put here base URL and I'll make it exportable so clients can change base URL in future. It also helpful when we write unit tests so we can replace it by the URL of the HTTP test server. Um, we'll put API key, which will be internal for now and HTTP client, which is a pointer to HTTP client. And I make HTTP client exportable so users can change it later, depends on their use case. Now let's write a function new client, which will accept API key as a string and return us pointer to the client. So you do return. Sorry. Um, client base URL. So we'll put something here. API key is what we send to the function. And let's put some default HTTP client. Will be HTTP dot client. Give it some default timeout. Let's put it just one minute. All right. Now we need to put base URL from here. And I'll include version there as well. And I'll I'll make it a constant. So base URL version one equal this slash version one. And put it here. Now we have the client struct and new client function. And all our API endpoints would be the functions of this type. So let's go ahead and create the function for the get faces endpoint. Let's go back to the documentation. 
let's choose get faces all right so from what i can see it supports pagination so there would be optional parameters limit and page it's a get endpoint and here's the response format also as i noticed in this api responses are following the same structure so we always have code we have message so this is in case of success response and if we go to errors here would be the error response format so we can define these uh, helper types and make them internal and i'll put them into the main faces.go file so you would have type success response so we'll have code as int and we will have data and data can be different so it will be just interface JSON data and something similar we would have for error response we also have code but instead of data we have a message which is a string Make sure you don't write all code of the API client in the same file. So in my case, it could be, I would just write everything in faces.go, but rather we can group our endpoints. For example, you can group them by the resource type. So in our case, any endpoint which starts with slash faces would be in the faces.go file. So I'll go and create this faces.go file. It's also belong to the same package. And now I usually start with defining the types, types of the response, types of the request. And you can do it manually, or you can just simply grab the JSON response, put it into JSON to go tool, and it will auto generate you the Go structure. We would need to change it a little bit because it's just a single big structure and we will separate it into a few smaller ones. So let's just put it here for now and here's our data all right so i'll call this um, faces result for example and then this one would go into the data so type for example faces list struct um, all right so here we'll have type face and type face image now let's change this a little bit so face image um i lost this somewhere all right so json faces json data and data is faces list so here are our main types of the response now get faces endpoint supports pagination and we can handle this by adding function arguments limit and page but they may be optional and they may change in future so i'd rather create a separate structure for the request and make it optional so let's create it as faces list options so we'll have limit int Oops. same for the page now it's time to define our function so it will be get faces and we'll have options as pointer to the faces list options which will return us faces list and error one more argument our function should support and it's the context so i'll let it as the first argument and context will allow people to control the api calls so they can create a context and pass it to the get faces function and for example, use case can be, you should cancel API call if it takes more than five seconds. And now we can code our API function and call the API itself. 
So first of all, let's define our optional limit. So by default would be 100 and page would be one. But if options are not nil, you would say limit equal options limit and page equal options page. Now let's create a request. So um, request error would be HTTP, it's called new request, get method. Now the URL and you don't send any data since it's a get endpoint, so just nil here. But in URL, so we need to use base URL, then slash faces and then send limit and page so we have c dot mm, sorry very important this get faces function should belong to the client struct so that's very important so c client and now we can access base url and now we can send our limit and page. Great. That's too many R in the request. <laughs> if error is not nil, return nil error. And now we should add a context to our request. And that's simple as this request with context ctx now let's add headers to our request so it could be request header set let's add content type which is application json and let's add accept application json and let's the most important one is authorization and he will set our API key so um, sprint f bearer s so c dot API key now let's make the request itself so result or response error is c dot http client dot do and we send request and same happens if there is an error and if there is no error you should make sure that at the end of the function we close the response body so response body close now we can check the errors here and what i'll do i'll just check the status code and in this api for example any status code less than 200 is an error and any status code greater or equal 400 is an error as well so we can check it by by checking response status code so if it's less than http status okay or res status code greater or equal http oops http status bad request and this might be different for your API or for any other API because the way APIs define errors are different. But this is a very common use case. Now we could simply return the error, but since our API provides error in the response, it will be in the message uh, field. So we can actually parse the response and convert it to the go error. And as you remember, we already defined the error response here. So what we would do, would, we would try to, to parse it. It may fail error response and now if error equal json new decoder response oops response body dot decode into error response so we check in if error not nil which means we couldn't couldn't decode it so in this case we would need to to just return some um, common error so return nil 
for example, fmt error f unknown error status code and we'll just send the status code back. So result status code. If we could actually parse the response and we just return it as a message, so return new as a result as well, but then errors new and this dot message. So for example, in this case, it could be, I don't know, face token not found, limit is greater than 2000, whatever, and we will actually see in the go error the actual API error. So now let's go to happy case and parse the success response. So I'll mark it as full response would be faces result. As you can see here, all our success responses have code, data, message, and we will improve it later because we have some duplication right now with success response. But we don't need our functions to return code and message in case of success. What we just want to return is faces list, the actual information itself. So as you can see it here, we just return faces list. But we need to parse the whole response. So we just used faces rest here and do similar as we do here mm, and just full response um, and if we fail to parse we just return new error otherwise we return pointer to full response dot data and new error Great, let's just fix some typos probably. All right, all green. Now, imagine you'll be writing the second endpoint. And yeah, this part could be different, request would be different, but actually the part from line 55 until the end will be pretty much the same because our API endpoints act in the same way. We send API key, the content type, content type is JSON, Maybe it can be flexible uh, later. And we parse error in the same way. We parse response in the same way. So it, it, it would actually make sense to create a helper function for this part, call it send request, make it internal, and just use it in all our endpoints. So I'll do this in faces.go file. So I'll do function um, send request, which would actually also belong to the client struct um, context as the first uh, argument then request as HTTP request and what else do we need so yeah we actually need to since yeah the code is, is the same but uh, uh data which this code should return is is different depends on depends on the endpoint so in this case it's, it will be faces list in other case it would be something else so we would decode actually in this function the response into variable v which can be interface and we would send it as a pointer and so now it just returns the error and nothing more cool um, let's just grab all of this and um, yeah, just cut it. This makes sense, makes sense. So we just return the, an error only. Yeah, only error. Only error. Now, full response. So here we can use actually now success response because it already has code and data as interface, which is very good. And we can do like this and define the data and pass the V, which would be the data type we need. So which we send here and it will put here. Now we can actually parse the full response. Return error in this case or return nil. Great, and now let's see how we use it here. So if error 
send request ctx request and now let's define v so v would be our result for example which will be faces list right and we will send it as a pointer here and if error not new just return new error and if all good return oh, so many typos today return error new great so our endpoints is actually very tiny now it just forming the request as well here define what data do we want and send a request so if you would write second endpoint you would do absolutely the same maybe change the request maybe change the content type also because it may uh, vary on the different api endpoints so now we have our api client with single endpoint which is enough for this example for sure i won't go and develop all of them but is it enough to be able to ship this api to users probably yes but there are a few more tips and good practices you can do with your API clients. And probably the most important is writing good unit tests and integration tests. And integration tests are very important for API clients because you can test the real responses, you can test probably the API keys, etc., etc., which is not always possible to test just with unit tests. But integration tests are usually longer to execute, longer to run, so we should separate unit tests and integration tests. Let's actually cover this getFaces function with our integration test. So I'll put this into the separate file called integration test.go and I'll put this annotation build integration, which will allow us to execute them separately from unit tests. Um, and let's test get faces test in t great and let's create our client first so new client now we need to pass api key here and we don't want to store this api key in the repository so it would be from environment variable get env and something like faces integration API key so we don't store this in repository and in your build system is it uh, Travis or cloud bill or whatever you are using you can set it no one would see this and it will be safe to just execute for example when we merge a pull request so now let's call get faces so result error bc dot get faces um, yeah context so in this simple case context could be just context dot background and let's not pass any options just just default case now we need to assert the result and error and what's inside of these types and i like using the testify package testify slash assert so i'll just input this into this our project maybe it's too much you know you can just do this simple comparison but I find it really easy so I'll just do how it works assert not nil so we pass t uh, what's not nil uh, result shouldn't be nil right so we assume that there should be some result for our API key um, and we can do expecting non nil result and we could do opposite but with error so expecting nil error and now we can actually go and see so result has actually i forgot to remove this type it's not used now because we replaced it with success response which is common so let's get rid of this um yeah now we need to assert this type so count pages count and for example for integration api key you can create a separate instance in the api where you won't actually mix mix any data with your integration data so you would always assume that there is for example only 
one phase there and with specific ID, etc. etc. So I can do here, for example, assert equal what we would have, for example, equal one um, result dot, dot count, right? So and then expecting one phase found. And of course, if it's one phase, there probably page count would be one as well. It's been one page found. Now, if it's one phase, so sh there should be one element here. Um, and I don't know, we can, for example, assert face ID, right? So just raise faces. Zero dot face ID equal to, for example, equal integration face ID, which I know there. So expecting correct face ID. Now, since we have this built in integration, I'll show you how to execute it. So we would need to do go test. So let's do this minus V and we will use minus tags flag and set integration all right undefined context um context yeah probably just all right should be better now run and it's passed the next big topic is documentation and personally i think that api clients should be self-explanatory with help of good abstractions good defined structs etc and as you know, Godoc supports these structs by default. So I think that Godoc link could be your main point of documentation. And in case your API is more complex, you can put it into README, into Wiki, or whatever is your format. Another important topic is compatibility and versioning. Make sure that you push the correct server when you release any new changes. Don't break anything when you release minor or patch versions. You can add new arguments to the functions only with major versions, and, but also try not to do this. And in general, I think API clients should follow the API itself. So if API releases the version two, then probably your API client should have a version two release as well. That's it for today. One question though, what are the best API Go clients have you seen so far? Please share them in the comments below. I hope it was interesting and helpful and see you next time.